All right, everybody, welcome back to IEI on Workshops. This is on workshop number two with uh, my friend Mitch Weisberg. Mitch has been uh, a consultant and advisor to ed tech companies um, for a couple of years and um, has been part of some of the really great, really great uh, businesses and organizations in K 12. Mitch also is one of the founders of edchatinteractive.org, where educators present their work. Um, Mitch, how are you doing today? Great. Thank you. How are you? Um, all right. We're, we both live in the New York area. We're, we're knocking on wood that we're healthy, right? I mean, it's uh, pretty crazy right here. It's been an interesting time. Yeah. So let's, let's dig in. Mitch has been working on some, some, uh, some work with a client of his called 3D Bear out of Finland, but uh, more generally about um, augmented reality and virtual reality. And so we wanted to share some of these thoughts. I'm sure some of you are in your districts are, are thinking through some of these these ideas and solutions. Um, and so we wanted to give you some perspective from Mitch's many years working on this. So to start off, Mitch, let's just define virtual reality and augmented reality in, in tangible terms. Okay, so virtual reality is really what you see when you put on goggles. So you're in your own separate world, it's virtual. Uh, and, um, I guess the, there is nothing more engaging in terms of an interactive experience than really good virtual reality because everything that you do is in this world. So you could be in the middle of repairing a car and you have the different pieces of a car. You could be in the middle of a battlefield and you could see what's going on behind you and you might even be able to affect what's happening behind you. Um, the two issues with virtual reality Number one is the goggles themselves. And in these days, the idea of having to sanitize the goggles after every use is difficult. And number two is it's is is the expense, the expense of the goggles and the expense right. of creating virtual reality uh, environments. They run what, like three, four hundred dollars a set? Uh, the the goggles are three or three to four hundred dollars a set, and I was just actually on an EdChat Interactive. I was talking to an, um, somebody who produces virtual reality, and he says his rule of thumb for producing virtual reality learning activities is ten thousand dollars per running minute. Oh, produce it like developing the software. He develops it, so he would develop it for a company, or he would, you know, he. He, right. he actually develops it much more for higher ed and corporate, but basically, um, you know, it, when somebody says, well, how much is this going to cost? It's like, well, how long do you want it? You know, it's, it's somewhere going to be somewhere around $10,000 for running minute. So, you yeah. know, you may, you may have a five minute piece that's going to cost $50,000 to develop. Some examples of VR and education that I've seen are, you know, things where you can tour historic sites. Um, I've worked with a company called, um, uh, um, gosh, I forget their name, Virago, that mm -hmm. does, uh, they get inside of a cell. Um, so it, the, the, I, would put, I would point out that 10 years ago, we thought laptops were super expensive and it was hard to get a laptop to every kid, right? Right. So maybe this becomes technology that uh, we figure out how to get to every kid. But for the moment, tough to do VR. So then what is AR? So augmented reality or AR is when you're looking through your device like you know, your cell phone, and you're looking through the camera, and you see the environment through the camera, and either you can place other 3D objects into that space, or you can see what other people have put into that space. So it's, it's you know, you're not fully enclosed, you're augmenting what you see through the camera. And uh, one type of augmented reality is an augmented reality where somebody's thought through everything for you. So like you point your camera at a building and it gives you the history of the building or you point your camera at a QR code and a dinosaur pops out of the QR code. I find those a little bit um, slick um, that, you know, the first impression from the kids is, wow, isn't this cool? But after using it for three or four times, it's just, you know, it's technology that just kind of it becomes expected and um, the kids aren't really doing anything. What I get excited about augmented reality is when the kids use it to create. So when they create stories and when you're involving them in the different stages of, let's say, Bloom's taxonomy. To me, that's really the crux of augmented reality where the kids are creating things that they then want to be able to show to other kids or to teachers or to another audience. Interesting. Uh, uh, a, 
an application of AR or VR that I think someone needs to build. And uh, if I weren't running IEI, maybe I would go build it. Hmm. Maybe it does exist. And if any of you out there know of it existing, please let us know. Um, so much of the work, especially with, um, with students with, with special needs or any kind of learning needs, so much of the work has to happen in person because of some of the cues. I know this because my wife's a special educator. So many of the mm -hmm. visual cues, the, the uh, oral cues, like uh, tapping on desks, um, you know, sometimes you know, there's a, a tap on a shoulder, those kind, or the manipulatives that kids use to, to focus. Um, yep. I wonder if there's an AR, VR um, application that could help kids, the kids who are really being left behind in this distance learning thing are those with more needs. And, and so, uh, so it's interesting because there, there was a study in Finland and um, I actually, there's an archive of, the, of uh, me interviewing the person who did this on EdChat Interactive, but um, where they took autistic kids mm -hmm. and were teaching them safety habits. And they were teaching them safety habits actually through a combination of augmented reality and virtual reality uh, where they walked through the building and they, they had to stop and do different things. And they found that that was an incredibly effective way because they, they, the kids were able to much more identify with what they were supposed to do in augmented reality and they couldn't like blow up the building. They couldn't make any serious mistakes. Very cool. All right. So Share some of the examples you know about there. Um, of so I'm going to just I'm going to just share my screen of the types of activities. If um, yeah. so, um, and if if anybody wants, just get in contact with me, and I can share these with with people. But you know, using augmented reality, you know, instead of having the kids develop a a book report on something that they read or write out a story, I mean, they can create these scenes and videos based on the scenes. This is an example in early grades where kids. Um, you know, this was actually first grade where kids created um, fairy tales, oh or um, or on on say on field trips. If you, to the extent you're going on field trips with kids, to have them take different stations on the field trips and add things to them. This is an example, say, from a kindergarten class where yeah. the kids had to you know add other animals and have other kids guess them. Yes, yeah. so, learning where kids project out. This is this is what happened when I felt sad. This is what I this is what happens when I feel angry. But here's another way that this situation might play out: um, how, recreating holiday scenes, recreating biomes, recreating or creating historical scenes and videos based on those scenes, um, creating stories that took place in a book or creating stories that that um, are based on a book. Um, this is kind of an interesting one where kids are. Um, creating a colony on Mars, and if you think about it, they have to understand, well, what would you need, need to do in order to sustain life on Mars? But then they create a story, what would I do if I lived on Mars, how would I spend a day? And they create a video story of, of, of going through their colony. Wow. Um, nutrition examples, and this is actually one of my favorites, is to, is to have the kids pull together science um, uh, social studies and have them come up with what's wrong with the world today and what what would they do to change it and instead of giving them this broad topic you know you can narrow it down I like to do this with the UN sustainability goals where there are 16 mm -hmm. individual goals and let's say have a group of kids concentrate on uh, ending poverty and they have to create they have to research it and then they have to create a scene you know what would the world look or why is poverty a problem today so develop a scene based on that. What would the world look like if there were no more poverty? Develop a scene based on that. And then what's something that we could do today? And then, you know, have different groups work on different problems. And then what I like to do at the end of something like this is to then have the teachers get up and say, this is what we learned from you. And that's kind of your reflection and review, but it's coming at a whole different level because the teachers are really have the kids' attention as they're describing what, what they learned. I think all of these are going through and 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 you know give you can have access to these slides that you could if right. you were teaching your teachers um you know bloom's taxonomy the foundational skills and the whole basis of this is 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 around design thinking so right. to me those are the ideal ways of using augmented reality to get the kids creating and solving problems that's what they care about and then the deep learning comes as they're trying to solve their problems this is great mitch thank you um
I did a, uh, with my kindergarten kid, I did a sort of kindergarten version of that UN project around Earth Day week that was really mm -hmm. fun. Um, it was on paper, but still, like we were doing stuff, right? All right, so, um, you know, help our, help our folks think about this. They're all furiously planning for what school is gonna look like next fall. Um, and it's, it's, it's a big challenge. They gotta, they gotta figure out how to completely redesign something that took 115 years to design. And right, right. Um, what, what, what are the big questions they might wanna go ask their chief academic officers or their deputies for instruction um, or their principals or whomever, whoever's making instructional decisions? What kind of things should they be thinking about? What questions should they be asking to make sure that they source and find the best AR opportunities this fall? Well, so I think that, that first of all is, do you have the devices that run augmented reality? Because frankly, the base Chromebooks don't, okay. but chances tablets? are the kids do have access to cell phones or maybe oh, there's tablets. a group of tablets that do. So the first thing is, do we have devices? And you don't need one-to-one -one because this is the type of thing that works best if kids work in groups of two to four. So one is we have the devices too. But to can we work in groups of two or four is a question. That's a question too, but you can, right? right if they're, if um, you, you can through Zoom because most of the process of the creation is done thinking and researching oh. And only the final part, and you and but also does does the program allow the kids to work uh, collaboratively if they're in different locations? Okay, so Fair that enough. would be a that that would be a second question. Okay, to me the I mean those are foundational. Mm -hmm. It's do the teachers know how to teach in this fashion? And if they don't, you probably can't change their entire method of teaching. But okay. what you can do is point them out point them to let's do six interactive labs or let's do four interactive labs in the first half and have them decide together how they're going to do those labs. You can give them some ideas, but, it'll, but um, instead of changing everything that they're doing, they're used to doing labs anyhow. The kids aren't necessarily going to be able to be in class all the time. So have them brainstorm together or you can brainstorm yeah. with them point them in a, a, a finite set of things where they're going to be using this technology. Okay, great. Anything else they should be thinking about or any, any places, are there places online where you can get ideas and uh, aside from, yeah, we'll share your stuff out with everybody, but. Right. Um, so, uh, so we are, we do have a couple uh, um, live webinars on this coming up on it's at interactive. That's okay. all free. People can do sure. that. Um, I happen to love uh, the program 3d bear. Um, so 3dbear.io is a website that they can go to and find out, you know, how to, what, what 3d bear does. Yeah. Um, I love, there's a, uh, there's a Twitter group that gets together. Eastern time is Thursday, Thursday nights at 8 PM on Thursdays mm -hmm. called games, the number four ed. Mm -hmm. So, um, you'll find real, you know, experts on, uh, deep learning using games and augmented reality who come to that. Um, that hashtag. So I would say those are all good places to send people. Great. Okay. Uh, we will share these slides. We'll share some of these links. And, and if they have uh, questions for me, you know, just get, you know, I'm, well, I'm happy yeah. to help. So yeah, so I'm gonna, we're going to now do an exchange where they're going to share some questions and ideas that they might be working on around this stuff. Mm -hmm. And then we'll do a follow up you and me to respond to that. Um, but in the meantime, I want to thank you. Uh, people give me um, give me the business about how many windows I have open on my screen. And when you shared yours, I'm glad to see you also have like a bazillion tabs open, which is me, <laughs> me. <laughs> we, we, are, we are birds of a feather to yes. all sides with lots of tabs. Um, and have you learned any Finnish in all your trips over there? I've learned one word of Finnish and that's kitos, which means thank you. <laughs> it's a really difficult language. Yeah, I bet. I've, I've always been interested to travel. Hablo espanol. Es, es uh, mucho uh, más fácil. Espanol. You can speak Spanish to Finns? I, uh, they won't understand me, but that's great. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Mitch, thanks for being on, and I uh, appreciate all of your, your ideas and insights. No, thank you. Okay, and talk to you soon. Take care.